Hello sailors. I'm Captain Tom Tersey from the Maryland School of Sailing and Seamanship. The steering compass is the single most important navigational instrument on your boat. It quietly works its role day and night regardless of the weather. It needs very little attention except the light for illumination, some oil now and then, and maybe a cleaning of the lens. But you depend on it every day while underway and you expect it to answer all requests that you make of it. But do you know its accuracy? Recently, one of our school boats came back from a cruise and the captain said, this compass is way out. How do you know that? Well, I'm going between these two buoys and the compass is nowhere near what the chart says for that course. So we went through a lot of evolutions on how to calibrate a ship's compass in a practical way. And we swung that boat's compass and here are the results. In the bottom scale is the boat heading per ship's compass, and the vertical scale is the compass error or deviation from magnetic. Notice that this deviation ranges from 16 west to 11 east. That's a huge error, which would put any navigation that we're doing in jeopardy. But having determined the error, we can now use it for our navigation to correct our courses. We can also adjust the compass to eliminate the error but we first needed to know what the error was in order to make the adjustments and to verify the results. I plan to show you the method we use to easily measure the compass errors. But first, let's review two topics. One, how to plot courses and bearings in true degrees. And two, the TVMDC table, which is used for converting between true and compass directions. We plot everything when we're doing paper plotting in true degrees. We find that it's more accurate and it's easier than plotting in magnetic. Now the reason I say that is more accurate because you're able to compensate for compass errors, compass deviation, and you're also able to compensate, of course, for magnetic variation. I want to go into this in a bit more detail as to how this can be done. In order to do plotting in true degrees, we use a triangle plotter that aligns to the vertical lines of longitude, the vertical lines on the chart, which are lines of longitude, and they are facing true north-south. And we use those lines as a reference line. And those lines are close by everywhere you plot on the chart, as opposed to a compass rose, maybe some distance. And if you're using parallel rulers or roller rulers, you may have to go quite some distance to get from the compass rows to where you're plotting and, and so forth. And that leads to slipping of the rules. It takes more time and you're less likely to be accurate with it. Now, the triangle plotter will plot in true degrees since we're using a true line, north-south line, a line of longitude as a reference line. And we use this triangle plotter for that purpose and you see that there's a degree scale on it, which goes from 0 to 180 in one direction, 180 to 360 in the other direction. This triangle plotter also has this crosshair right here. And that's a point that we will use for aligning with the line of longitude. I'll show you how we actually use this. Here's this triangle on the chart. You can see here's a channel. So we take our plotter initially, we put the hypotenuse on the line that we want to measure the direction of. And then we slide that over a short distance along our parallel rules, since a couple of inches, until those crosshairs fall on this vertical line of longitude. And then we look down here at the scale, and we can immediately read the direction of that route. It was going in the northeast direction. I want to measure that direction. And we see here I have two choices, the red 220 and the black 40. I'm going northeast, therefore I'm going to be in the 40 range, not the 220 range. So here I have 40, 41, 2, 3, 4, 5, 45. So I'm measuring immediately 44 and a half degrees. And you cannot see that on the compass rows because the compass rows ticks are too small, too close together. And you're lucky if you can read within one or two degrees on those in many times. And a lot of times they are in two degree increments. 
So here I have a very easy reference to a true direction of 44 and a half degrees. I did not have to walk far across the chart and I immediately have that result with very little effort. So then we have to be able to convert from true to compass in order to give instructions to the helmsman as far as what course to, to follow. And we have to convert between true and compass. And the old familiar TVMDC table, of course, is what we will use. But let's review this just a little bit to, so that we're all on the same page. And we have TVMDC, true variation magnetic deviation compass. And variation is the difference between true and magnetic. And variation changes with your location on Earth. It has nothing to do with the boat. It has to do with your physical location on Earth. And this chart, with all these squiggly lines on it, shows how the magnetic variation is different in different locations on Earth. And we get our magnetic variation number from a local chart close to where we're sailing. So here's a chart close to the area that we're sailing. And we see the star, zero, representing true north. North-south is parallel to the lines of longitude, vertical lines of longitude on the chart. And then we have magnetic north pointing to the left or to the west of true north. And right here you see 330, 340, 350. So here's 10 degrees. And this is pointing at about 11 or so degrees to the west. And you see variation is 11 degrees 30 minutes west. So the compass rose is telling us what is the variation at this location in the year of 2013. That also changes slightly with, with date, but not a great deal. So when it's pointing to this side of the zero, it's west. When it's pointing to this side of the zero, it's easterly variation. So that's how we get our variation for the TVMDC table. Then deviation is a difference between magnetic and compass, what your boat compass is showing. And deviation changes with your boat heading. So for a particular lo location on Earth, we have a particular magnetic direction. And as we change our boat heading, the deviation of the compass will change. The error in the compass will change with boat heading. And the reason for that is that as we look at our boat, and here's the compass, and we have magnetic influences within the boat. For example, we have the engine, which is a massive piece of metal within the boat. It's going to affect the compass to a certain degree. So as we change the heading of the boat, magnetic north is going to stay roughly the same, but it's going to be affected slightly by the rotation of the engine around the compass. Let's look at what I'm talking about. So I now change my boat heading here, and the engine is now on the west side of the compass car. And I change my direction here. The engine is now on the north side of the compass car. And I change here. It's now on the east side. So that magnetic influence will be changing around the compass car as we change boat heading. That's compass deviation from magnetic. We have to determine what is the accuracy of our compass if we're going to be using the compass at all in our navigation. So do you know the accuracy of your compass? Compass calibration, how do we do it? Well, there are several methods available. One is we can sight on a stationary range. We can also sight on the sun. We can sight on sun shadows. And we can use GPS. Well, let's first address GPS because this question comes up a lot. Well, GPS can be used if you do not have wind or current effects. Because with wind and current, the direction of the boat over ground, according to the GPS, may be this direction, but your boat is heading in this direction, so you are never going to get a direct correlation between the two of those if you have wind and current. So you can do that if you don't have wind and current. The second method is sighting on a stationary range. This is how it's taught 
in most navigation courses, and here are two stationary objects, the point of land and this beacon, which is a navigational aid. You can find it on the chart. The alignment between those will establish a, a direction which we go to the chart and we determine the direction of that line between those two objects. We then motor our boat across the line outside of the range here and we go in this direction and as we cross that range we sight across the compass at the instant that we cross the range we cite what the compass says the range is and we will use that in our TVMDC table. However, this is very difficult to do. The compass is buried in the cockpit, the sails and dodger are in the way, you need to see the range and the compass at the same time and you need to catch this number on the run as the boat is moving across this range. So looking at the, at the cockpit is virtually impossible to see the range in all directions. And to sight across this compass is a real challenge. Maybe on the port side and starboard side it will work, but certainly looking in other directions, you're never going to be able to see that range. So the fact is that this method, which is taught in most navigation courses, is virtually impossible to do with any degree of accuracy. So let's look at another option, and that is to sight on the sun. You can sight on the sun using a Polaris, and the Polaris reads bearings to the sun relative to the bow of the boat. To sight directly into the sun, you have to look directly into the sun. And here's a Polaris. This is a vintage Polaris with a sighting line and a sighting slit and shades to cover the sun's brightness and so forth. But the fact is that you're still looking at the sun, towards the sun, and you're really putting your eyes at risk in doing this. And I don't recommend it at all. So a safer way is to read the shadows cast by the sun with a sun compass. And this establishes a stationary reference line on your boat. The previous reference line that we had with the range between the point of land and the beacon was off of your boat. This method will establish a, a reference line on your boat, which is close at hand. I'm going to show you how this can be done very, very easily with a sundial and a radar maneuvering board. The sundial can be very easily manufactured, as you can see right here. It'll take you about 30 minutes to make that. Cut out a 4x4 four four square of plywood or a circle. Draw crosshairs on that piece of plywood. Drill a hole in the center, an eighth inch hole. Go to Home Depot, get a 1 eighth inch metal rod. Cut 12 inches, stick it into the hole. You now have a sundial. And then I combine that with a maneuvering board, which is this paper chart, a 360 degree chart, compass rose. And you can buy these maneuvering boards in pads of 50 for about $10. You draw on it a set of crosshairs. You go from 0 to 180 this way. And then you draw another one this way. I now have crosshairs. And I'll use those crosshairs to align the sun, sun compass crosshairs on the maneuvering board. I now go to my boat and, and to do this I don't have to be in the cockpit. I don't want to be in the cockpit. I want to be up forward on the boat where there's much less obstruction and I find a place on my deck house top and I draw a center line on the boat. I draw a center line as a reference line. That now indicates to me the bow of the boat and the center line of the boat. I now take the maneuvering board chart and I tape it down and I align the crosshairs of the maneuvering board with the line that I drew on the deck. I now have the maneuvering board aligned zero to the bow, 180 to the stern, perfectly aligned on the boat. I can now use that to indicate angles relative to the bow of the boat. And I then put the sun compass on it, as we saw before. I line the crosshairs 
This looks like they're misaligned, but it's just parallax the way we're looking at it. These are actually perfectly aligned when you look straight down on it. And you see I have a beautiful shadow cast by the sun of the pin in the middle, and that is a reference line. That shows the direction to the sun. It's on my boat, and it's very close at hand. I don't have to be sighting that range a distance away. So the way we use this, then, is the helmsman is going to put the boat on different headings. Remember, this deviation changes with the direction of the boat, the boat heading. So let's go through this a few steps. The, the helmsman now is putting the boat on a course of 000 per ship's compass. So the helmsman calls out, steadying up on course 000, ready, mark. And I mark the shadow as shown here. And note the time and write in the course, 000. zero, zero. The helmsman now goes on to the next heading, steadying up on 045. Ready? Mark. I mark the shadow. I write in the course 045 and I write in the time. The helmsman now goes to the next heading, steadying up on 090. Ready? Mark. I mark the chart, mark the course, mark the time, and we go on to the next until we complete the circle around the complete compass. So here is data that we took on Sailing Vessel Navigator on July 14, 2017. We were at this position, latitude, longitude shown, and for that location, the magnetic variation was 11.5 degrees west. And here is the sun compass data that resulted from that on July 14th. The maneuvering board chart, and you can see the different courses marked around there. Course 000, two little lines, and those lines actually bordered the shadow. Course 045, Course 090, and so forth around the circle to complete the circle. At the same time as we got each of those locations, we also marked in the time. Hours, minutes, and seconds of local time. So let's look at this a little bit closer. So, and you see right here what was marked, course 000. And if I read the scale, the degree scale on this chart, you see here in the lower left-hand corner, 300, 310, 320, and our marks for this course bracket, 309. So 309 is actually the direction of the shadow of the pin of the sun compass. The actual sun is 180 degrees in the opposite direction. It's actually the reciprocal of 309. And I'll show you how we're going to handle that in our calculations. Here is our sun compass data extracted from that chart on a boat heading of 000. We had recorded 309 as the reciprocal relative bearing to the sun. Now relative bearing means relative to the bow of the boat. Reciprocal is the reciprocal of the sun's direction at that time. So it's actually going to be 309 minus 180 degrees or 129. And you see the heading here, sun compass relative bearing. Where this column was sun compass reciprocal relative bearing, after we subtract 180, this is sun compass relative bearing. So it's relative to the bow of the boat. And then we take that number, the 129, add it to the boat heading per compass, and they add up to 129, which becomes the compass bearing to the sun based on the ship's compass. If the reciprocal relative bearing 
is less than 180, you simply add 180 to it. For example, in this second line from the bottom, for a heading of 270 degrees, we have a reciprocal relative bearing of 38, 38 degrees. We simply add 180 to that in order to get the relative bearing of 218 degrees. Now you notice that in this column under the compass bearings to sun that these numbers in this last column are all pretty closely the same within five or six degrees of one another. And that makes sense when you think of what we talked about before with the boat heading changing that the compass stays pretty much in the same direction but it changes a little bit. Well, there's a little bit that it changed. So we now have our bearings to the sun. Let's now go on and look at what that actually means. So let's look at the second line in this table. And you see here the boat heading of 045 PSC, the sun compass relative bearing 86 PSC, and the compass bearing to sun 131 PSC. So all three of those numbers are based on what the compass is saying those directions are. Let's look at a diagram to see what this looks like. We see the star at the top and that's true north. We see the M and that's magnetic north for this location on Earth. And then we see the C and the C is compass north based on this boat heading at this location. And then from this red line up to the C, compass north, you see 45 degrees PSC refers to the boat heading. And we see 86 degrees relative bearing that's relative to the bow of the boat pointing to the direction of, of the sun. We add up 45 for the boat direction and 86 for the relative bearing and that gives us 131 PSC for the direction of the sun based on the compass and that is measured from compass north. Let's go back and look at those numbers and we see the 45 degrees in the left hand column, 86 degrees in this third column under sun compass relative bearing, and then we see the compass bearing 131. And that's what this diagram is showing, how those three different angles relate to one another. Now let's take the next step. Now we have to calculate the true bearing to the sun. And remember the true bearing to the sun is going to be based on the date and the time and your location. These were the times that we recorded when we took the readings on the shadow. For the first line, you see boat heading again, 000. The second column, first line, we see the time in Eastern Daylight Time, because that was the time we were keeping. And you see it's 11 hours, 14 minutes, 10 seconds. 11, 14, 10. We then had to convert that to Greenwich Time in order to do the calculation and you see that is 15, 14, 10. And basically what that gets down to is that we're actually in the fifth time zone here, but we're on daylight time. So standard time will subtract one hour from this 11, 14, 10 and make it 10, 14, 10. And then we want to add five hours to it for the fifth time zone, and that makes it 15, 14, 10. So it's minus one hour to convert from daylight to standard time, standard zone time, and then plus five hours to convert for the five time zones. If you know how to do celestial calculations, this is an easy calculation for you. If you don't, you can get an app for your smartphone It'll do the calculation for you. Now this particular app, Star Pilot, is the one that I have for my iPhone. 
it's pretty expensive as apps go. This app is about $50. But also for Androids, there's another app which I have not used, but I understand Starstruck will do the same calculation. And that's only a few dollars for Android devices. So this is what I use for the calculations. Now here's the data that we're going to be putting into the Star Pilot. Again, the date, July 14th, 2017. Latitude, longitude is shown. And then I'll show you an example of the calculations for GMT 151410, which is for the boat heading of 000, that we looked at on that first line. Here is a Star Pilot data entry form. And in it you see the body, the sun, watch time, 151410, which is the time that we refer to. HS refers to the sextant reading, which we're not using for this calculation. The date, July 14, 2017. The latitude and longitude entered that we had previously. The rest of these we don't have to worry about. And then we go on to the star pilot results. And we see on this screen ZN, which refers to bearing to the sun. And you see that it's 116.1 degrees true. So that's our result. We do the same thing for each and every one of those lines of data. And here are all the different bearings to the sun that we calculated. So you see that there's a difference of about 5 degrees, actually 5.7 degrees, between the sun's direction between the zero heading and the 315 degree heading. We now need to create a TVNDC table to calculate the compass deviations for all of the boat headings. When using the TVMDC table to convert between true, magnetic, and compass, Use the following rules for adding or subtracting variation and deviation. Moving from left to right in the table, add west or subtract east variation or deviation. Moving from right to left in the table, do the opposite and add east or subtract west variation or deviation. For example, with the number shown here, to convert true to magnetic left to right in the table, Add the 3 west variation to the 140 true as follows. 140 true plus 3 west equals 143 magnetic. And to convert magnetic to compass, also left to right, subtract the 2 east deviation from the 143 magnetic as follows. 143 magnetic minus 2 east equals 141 compass. And do the reverse when moving from right to left in the table. For example, to convert compass to magnetic, right to left, add the 2 east deviation to 141 compass as follows. 141 compass plus 2 east equals 143 magnetic. And to convert magnetic to true, also right to left, subtract the 3 west variation from the 143 magnetic as follows. 143 magnetic minus 3 west equals 143. If you remember the first rule, that is to add west when moving from left to right in the table, you will learn with practice that the other three rules follow logically. And now back to Sailing Vessel Navigator's compass calibration. We're going to take the, the information that we previously developed. Here are the different boat headings. We've been talking about these. Here are the true directions to the sun that we just calculated. From a local chart, we looked up the variation for this location, 11.5 degrees west. So we take the true bearing to the sun, 116.1, plus 11.5 west. That comes out to a magnetic of 127.6. And I rounded that off to a whole degree of 128 because a whole degree is the closest accuracy that we can reasonably expect. So we did the same thing for each of these boat headings. We calculated the direction to the sun in magnetic, and you see those numbers. And the last column is the compass bearing to the sun based on the shadow, the reciprocal of the shadow that we previously developed. We put those in the last column. We now have the blank column under D 
which is deviation, we're going to use the magnetic column and the PSC column and calculate deviation. So you see we have magnetic of 128 for the first line, and we have compass bearing to sun of 129, a difference of one degree, and it's increasing going from left to right in this table, so that means that it's westerly variation, and therefore we write in here one west in this first row under D. So we do all of these boat headings in the same manner, and here is what we end up with. So we now use that information to develop a deviation table. And for the deviation table, we only need three columns. So in the right-hand column, we put the boat headings that we've been talking about all along up to this point. And in the middle column, we put the compass deviations that we just calculated in the previous table. And from these two columns, we now develop the left-hand column. And the reason we need the left-hand column called boat heading magnetic, the right-hand column is called boat heading PSC, per compass. We need both of those columns to look up deviation because sometimes we are converting a heading, a bearing from true to compass, and in that we have to enter the deviation table from the left, from the left-hand magnetic column. And at other times we're converting from compass to true, and we therefore enter the deviation table from the right-hand side from the PSC column. So in order to develop this left-hand column magnetic, we take the right and the middle column, and we take 0, 0, 0, 1 west is a minus going from right to left in this table, which makes it 3, 5, 9. 0, 4, 5 minus 3 for 3 west is 0, 4, 2, and so forth for the remainder of the boat headings. And with that, just to show you what the results mean, we drew a deviation graph, and along the bottom you see boat heading, 0, 4, 5, 90, and so forth. And then we also see compass deviation, here's 0. And then up top you see 5 west, down at the bottom 5 east, 10 east, and we drew this characteristic. And it gives you an impression of what the deviations are for this particular boat compass. Now let's talk about three applications for using this information. One is converting from true to PSC course. The other is converting from PSC to true course, the reverse of the previous one. And the third is converting from PSC to true bearing. So let's look at each of these in turn. First off, looking at true to PSC course. As navigator, you plot a desired course line of 118 true. What course do you tell the helmsman to steer? In order to answer this, set up a TVMDC table, enter 118 true in the T column on the left, and complete the table looking up variation on local chart, using true plus variation to calculate magnetic. So 118 plus 12 west is 130 magnetic. Now we have to go and use 130 magnetic and the deviation table in order to look up the deviation number. So let's look at 130 magnetic. In the left-hand column, we have, under magnetic, 089 and 139. And 130 falls between the two of those. From 089 to 139 is 50. From 089 to 130 is 41. So it's 41 over 50 times the difference between the deviations for those two lines, 1 west, to 4 east is a difference of 5, so I'm going to take the 41 over 50 times 5, and that becomes 4.1, or I round it off to 4, 
and it's 4 to the east of 1 west, so it's 3 east. And I take my 3 east, put it in the D column, so that's going to be 130 minus 3 will become 127 as the course that I tell the helmsman to steer. Let's take the next example. And in this case, PSC to true course, the helmsman reports that he's unable to hold the requested 127 PSC due to unfavorable wind direction, but he can hold 150 PSC. As navigator, plot this course to determine how far and long you can hold 150 before needing to tack. So again, set up a TVMDC table as shown, enter 150 in the C column. Now, for this case, I have to look up deviation based on 150 PSC. So let's look at the deviation table again, and I see in the right-hand column, 135 PSC and 180 PSC, and 150 falls between the two of those. So therefore, I'm going to use a deviation of 5 east. I go back to my TVMDC table. I put the 5 east into that table. So 150 plus 5 east becomes 155 magnetic. Minus 12 west becomes 143 true. And I can now plot 143 true and make a determination. To confirm your position, you ask the helmsman to take a bearing on Smith Point Light off to our starboard. The helmsman reports that Smith Point Light bears 198. So set up a TVMDC table again, but using boat heading of 150, because that's what the helmsman is holding, using a boat heading of 150 PSC to look up deviation, not using the bearing, because the compass deviation doesn't care what direction you happen to be looking over the compass at. The compass deviation cares what heading the boat is on. And in this case, the helmsman is steering 150 PSC. So we're going to look up the deviation based on 150 PSC, which we previously did as 5 east. So I take 198 as the bearing per compass. I then add to that 5 east to calculate magnetic bearing of 203. 198 plus 5 is 203. I subtract 12 west for the variation, and that gives me 191 true as the bearing, which I can now plot on the chart in true degrees. Well, sailors, I hope that you find this discussion as a helpful method for calibrating your compass, and I wish you all the success that we experience when using it, and thank you for participating.